That makes one more task off of my to-do list. We always wanted an over-sink light right there, just to give us a little bit of extra light working in the sink. And uh, it feels good to get that done. It complements the under cabinet lighting there nicely. I can tell you in the evening, this is gonna be really refreshing. Uh, maybe when our eyes are kind of adjusted down and a little extra light finishing up the dishes before bed will hit the spot. As wonderful as this lighting is, there's a problem though. I did not see this coming and I've never had this problem before. So I'm gonna guess that there's some people watching this video who already know the answer. And there's some of you that either are having this problem or are gonna have this problem that will appreciate following along as we solve this issue. So this under cabinet lighting and over sink is all LED, which is wonderful. It's low power consumption. Uh, we can change the color of the light. Uh, it's very convenient. Wonderful things, correct? The only problem is that there's a technology here that doesn't uh, play well. It's not very compatible with LED lighting and it's these switches. So we put these lighted switches in here so that at night when you come down here you can see these two switches so that we can turn the under cabinet and the over sink light on without having to fish for a light switch. This switch over here is actually not used at the moment. We've uh, added a box in the ceiling for track lighting and we're just not using that at the moment so there's no need for a lighted switch. The problem is that the way these switches create this aura or glow is not compatible with these LED lights. As we showed you at the beginning of this video, we basically end up with a fireworks show. <laughs> it's kind of a strobing effect that happens. And basically what happens there, is it's pretty weird. Let me show you. Let's see, let's go to 200 volts, AC, alternating current. So we have these under cabinet LEDs wired into this outlet here, and then this little wall wart, as a friend of mine calls them so affectionately, converts the voltage down from 110 volts down to whatever needs to be for these. It's probably like 12 or 24 or something. Yeah, so it's dropping it down to 12 volts. So now that I've unplugged that, you'll actually see the light over there strobing. Really quick, the reason that's happening is when we have two of these lights plugged in, this one and that one, the effect of this situation I'm gonna show you is kind of diminished because there's two sets of lights that are uh, sharing this voltage and so it's less. If I unplug one, the other one goes super nuts. So let's take a look at what's happening. So this light switch is turned off um, so these lights are actually not on. So why in the heck is their voltage, right? Not good. So we're showing zero volts. So let's uh, check for voltage here and see what we get. So what you're going to see is the voltage going up, 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 strobe, down, 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 up, 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 strobe, down, 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 down. All right, if we unplug the other light, let's take a look at what happens when we do that. Okay, and this is where we're gonna see what's happening in the underlying problem. So what we should see is about 55 volts. We're showing 53. And it should be fairly steady, which it is fairly steady until we plug in one of these wall warts or transformers. And what's happening there is the voltage that we're seeing is actually being used to power the backlight on that switch. That's what's creating the glow. And the problem is that when we plug these wall warts in or these transformers, they have some sort of a capacitor or something in them that actually stores up the voltage until it has enough current or voltage, I guess, to fire and it lights the LEDs. But when that happens, the, the capacitor empties itself of its charge and then the lights go out and this cycle repeats. Maybe if I draw this, it'll be a little easier to understand. Before we get to that, let's look at a problem that's also happening. When we don't have something plugged into this outlet, this light does not glow very bright, where if you see this one is actually glowing fairly bright. So the other issue is that because of how these are designed, it actually doesn't fulfill the need of the switch to do its job. So this is a very primitive drawing of the circuit that we're dealing with here. And these colors are not correct either, so you politically correct people are gonna be flipping out. 
But the point remains that our red is our hot wire and this is our light switch and this is the switching leg and then here is our neutral wire and what happens in this circuit is that the neutral completes the circuit here at the light bulb or in this case the LED lights and so when we flip the switch a circuit is created because this neutral does not touch the switch therefore in order for this switch to be lighted there has to be some amount of resistance out here at the bulb. There has to be a circuit. And what it does is it passes just 55 volts along this circuit when the switch is turned off. And that's how this thing is able to glow. The problem is when we unplug our LED light out here, there's nothing out here to create resistance and therefore the switch doesn't glow because there's no circuit. We would need something to connect from here to here and then the switch would glow. But because we unplug the light, now there's no circuit and now there's no glowy switch, which we want. The other problem is that this switch is passing voltage even when the switch is off. And so this little capacitor out here will draw a battery, which is kind of what a capacitor is, is getting 55 volts going into it even when the switch is turned off. And that 55 volts very slowly builds up in the capacitor and when the battery gets full, it sends it to the light and the light blinks. Or in this case, it actually strobes. And then of course, once it strobes, this battery is empty and then it has to fill back up again. And that process repeats over and over and over and you get this endless strobing of your LED light. So you can see that this circuit is not working the way it should be. These glowing switches were originally designed to work with an incandescent bulb. Incandescent bulbs don't have any kind of a ballast, they don't have any kind of a capacitor or anything like that they're simply resistance lighting. And 55 volts happens to be insufficient to light the bulb. So even though this light switch is turned off and it's still passing voltage on the other side of the switch, that incandescent bulb will not turn on. You won't see anything happening there. But the problem is with fluorescence or compact fluorescence and LEDs, they have some sort of a ballast or a driver or a capacitor or something that allows the voltage to be changed. And that process is what's creating this issue. So this issue is really only on circuits where you're using a compact fluorescent bulb that has some sort of ballast in its base, that big heavy chunk at the bottom of the squirrely thing, or an LED light setup. We happen to have LED lighting in our bathroom also. I'm not sure though whether this would be an issue on lights of this size. We don't have a glowy switch in here and so we've never really had that problem. But I do want to put a glowy switch in here and therefore I don't want to create that problem. So we're going to put a glowy switch in here and we're going to solve the problem in the bathroom all that today. This switch is the answer to our problems. So while this switch has a glow function when it's turned off, how it's able to achieve that glow is different than the switch that we currently have installed in the wall. Let's take a look back at the circuit and I'll show you how this switch is different. Okay, I redrew our light bulb just to make it a little easier to understand what's happening here. And let's put our hot and our neutral back. All right, so this switch over here, as we've drawn, this black is the neutral wire, and it's necessary in this uh, household AC current to complete the circuit. It's a return path to the electrical grid, and that's what completes the circuit. And this switch is only switching the hot leg and the neutral is constant and so we're able to break the circuit right here but as we mentioned this switch over here is passing voltage so let's draw a different switch here and this is going to be our new switch the way this switch works is the hot comes into the switch and so does the neutral
And therefore, when we switch this new switch off, we'll actually be breaking the entire circuit. But the difference is, this will actually be able to complete a circuit. So when we turn this switch off, a circuit will actually be made right here, and this will allow this switch to light up. Even though no current is going down here to the light bulb. So essentially what we're doing here is we're actually switching this connection. Either we're allowing voltage to pass through the switch or we're terminating the voltage at the switch while still creating a circuit. Well, I've been doing some research and I'm starting to worry that I may have purchased the wrong switch because this is a single pole switch and there simply is nowhere to create this circuit that I've drawn here, which I believe is what we need in order to achieve this. Even though I thought I did my thorough research and chose the correct switch, an illuminated decorator switch to replace this. But now I'm worried that this switch is gonna do the exact same thing that what's in there already is doing. And I can't really seem to find any handy information uh, on this topic. So I think we're just gonna put this switch in and see what happens. totally screwed that one up so I guess back to the internet we go to order the right switches I'll be darned well I have bad news guys I have gone around the Google many times and unfortunately it looks like I have literally broken the internet uh, for some reason, I literally cannot find a solution to this problem. It shocks me that in this era of LED everything, nobody has come up with a switch that is lighted when it's off that doesn't cause this problem. I will say that several of our larger lights, such as in the bathroom and stuff, we don't have this problem that I know of. Like I said, I don't have a lighted switch on some of these LEDs, so I don't know if they're problematic or not. But some of the ones that we have are not. So maybe this isn't so much a switch problem as it is more an LED problem. But the fact remains that there's clearly a place in the market for a solution to this problem. I stand by my amateur wiring diagram here that if there was a switch like this, a double pole switch, because now you're required in residential to have a neutral in the switch box, which in the past wasn't the case, but now it is. You have to have this neutral. And part of the reason that's important is for all this smart switch technology, you're gonna have to have that neutral to make a circuit. And so having that neutral in the box makes this possible. In the past, if there was no neutral in the box, well, guess what? It wouldn't really matter. You're pretty much stuck to a single pole switch. Of course, there was a period of time where the ground was allowed to be used as a neutral, and let's not even get into that conversation because it's not, it's not viable right now, although there probably are some houses out there where this would be allowed, but let's not talk about that. So I did talk to a couple of my electrician contacts just to see if maybe they had a solution to this problem. And the only thing I had anybody recommend to me was putting some sort of parasitic load on the circuit, such as one incandescent bulb. Well, I don't really have a way to do that. 
So ironically, I bought some night lights. I went to try to find, get this, an incandescent night light. In the modern era of LED everything, go figure, I couldn't find a single incandescent night light. So I bought these little LED night lights, and believe it or not, when I plug it in, it does take care of the strobing effect. Basically, this light just kind of glows dim. And then when you turn the switch on, of course it turns this on and it glows kind of bright. So I'm not really sure what to think about this. To me, it's not really a solution to the problem. It's very much a band-aid. So I think what I'm suggesting is that either I haven't found the solution and you guys know what it is, in which case I really hope you'll share so that myself and everybody else can benefit finally. There's an answer on the internet. Or there's room for innovation here. Somebody can make a switch that does this or something similar and we can all finally have backlit switches on our LEDs. I'm not a huge fan of putting out a video when I can't solve the problem. I guess the answer is I'm not really a big fan of not solving a problem. But every once in a while as we build this house and we get control over how it functions and acts, we run into a problem that apparently there is no solution for on the commercial market. Usually we can either fabricate or create a workaround. On this one I'm kind of stumped. And I'm not really looking for band-aids. I've seen a lot of other products that kind of work around this problem such as putting night lights in the switch plate cover or things like that. But that's not really what I want. I'm looking for a switch that does this exact function. So anyway, hopefully you guys know the answer. If you do, please put it in the comments below. Let's spread the word. Let's give this thing some life on Google so that when other people run into this dumbfounding problem, we've got the answer and everybody can finally have glowy switches on their LEDs.